177 nth high salary. So this is basically a continuation of the problem 176, which was second highest salary. So very similar problem, except this time around, we're actually creating a function and we're gonna wanna make this dynamic. So if you can pass n, it's gonna grab the nth highest value. So how do you do that? Um, we're gonna cover that right here. So if you remember, you know, there might be different ways to, let's say if I wanted to pull the second highest salary, right? There's different ways to do that. One of the ways that a lot of people um, use the, the particular approach, they would say, okay, well, how do I know what's the second highest salary? Let's grab the first highest salary. And that would be something like, um, you know, you would select max salary um, from the employee table, right? And that's that's the max salary. And then they would do something like this. Now that they know this is the highest salary, they can do something to the tune of select max salary where salary um, is not the highest salary, right? So basically this is saying, give me the highest salary. And once I have that, look at that table again and give me the highest salary that's not that first highest salary. And that effectively is the second highest salary. The problem is, what if I want the third highest salary or, or the nth highest salary, right? This is not a scalable solution because then you just end up having a subquery after subquery and it's just not practical. So we have to come up with a different approach and I did use that in the last video. So be sure to check that out. But um, let's kind of demonstrate what we need to solve for here. So let's say we have a table like this. I'm just gonna copy and paste this in and I'm actually gonna also populate some additional rows. So let's say we had ID four, five, six, and then we had 400, we had 400, we had 500, okay? And just looking at this, what do you think would be the first highest salary, right? It would be 500, right? So if we had to rank this, this would be one. What about 400? That would be the second highest. What about this one? Again, it would be the second highest, right? We wouldn't say it's the third highest. We would say it's the second highest because it is the second highest. Um, next one, again, three and then four and then five. You get the gist of it, right? So imagine we had a table like this and then I wanted to pick the nth highest salary. In this case, n might be four, it might be three. If I had a view like this, all I would have to do is say where you know, where this particular column, let's let's call it a rank, where the rank equals n and n would be four or three or whatever you pass basically, right? It would be pretty straightforward. So the question is how can we get from a table like this to a table like this? What kind of function or what do we need to use? And as you're probably aware, we are gonna have to use some sort of rank function that would be one of the different approaches. And again, we talked about this in the last video, but you have different rank functions, right? You have the row number function, you have just the rank function, and then you have the dense rank function. So you really have to make a conscious decision in terms of which type of function you're using and why you're using that particular function. And that's what we're gonna cover um, in this video as well. So let's get right to it. So again, we want something like this. How do we achieve that? Which one of these functions would give us something like this? So I can tell you right away, it's gonna be dense rank, right? And before I kind of go and explain why that is, let's just kind of add some of the other options here, right? So we had row number and then we had uh, rank. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the differences, right? So if you had row number, this would be one. This would be two, this would be three, right? Why? Because row number um, is gonna assign a unique identifier to every single row. You cannot have, you cannot use the row function and have it be the same value, unless of course you're you know, partitioning, but that's not the case here. So all of these rows, right? Remember we talked about 400 being for ID four and five, it's the same salary. Guess what? It's gonna have a different row number and that's gonna throw it off and I'll show you why. Um, but again, um, if we use the rank function, you see something similar to dense rank here, right? So you'd have one, two, you'd have two again, but then it would, you know, jump to four um, and then five and then six. And the reason why is because, you know, this is in place of three. So right after three, you go to four and that's how the rank function works. If you didn't want to have that gap, you would have to use dense rank. So again, let me just kind of walk through why these other options aren't correct. Let's say I want the third highest salary, right? N equals three. Give me the third highest salary. 
In this case, it should be 300, right? And you're able to use this column because it says three. If I use row number, it would say 400 is the third highest salary, but that's not the case. How about over here? If I use rank instead of dense rank, if I want the third highest, guess what? There is no third highest because it jumps from two to four. There's no, in existence, there is no rank three. And because of that, it would incorrectly return no, no rows at all for that, even though clearly um, salary 300 would be uh, the correct answer. So for that reason, we want to use the dense rank function. So, you know, at least we know how to approach this problem. So I'm going to comment this out. And then um, basically what we want to do is what you see over here, we're going to want to create a table like this with these three columns or even just, you know, the first and third column here. And then using that as like a subquery or a CTE, I can then say, okay, give me the salary where this, you know, this third column where the rank equals three or four or five, you know, based on N. So whatever I pass here, you know, where dense rank equals N. And that's how that would work. So query going to look like, um, and again, you can use a subquery, you can use a CTE. In my case, I would prefer to use a CTE just because it's a little bit cleaner. Again, personal choice. So I'm going to name my CTE um, something like uh, ranked salaries. That way it's a little more clear in the, in the event that I want to use it in the future. Um, so with this CTE as, right, and what are we doing? We're pulling, first we're gonna pull the, we're gonna have to make sure we have the salary from the employee table. So select, uh, we're gonna have ID, we're gonna have salary, we're gonna have, uh, again, as we discussed, we're gonna have this dense rank, right? Dense rank. And then, you know, this could be in any particular order. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the highest salary is rank one and the second highest is rank two and so on and so forth. So we're gonna to have to make sure this is sequenced in you know the appropriate fashion, which is descending. So over order by salary descending, right? That's gonna ensure, you know, again, highest salary is number one, so on and so forth. Give this an alias of rank or whatever works for you. Um, and then again, this is coming from the employee table, right? And that's my CTE, right? So this is essentially these three columns, right? So the bulk of the work is done. Now I want to make it so that in this function, when I pass a value like two or three or four, this dynamically only returns the particular salary based on that new rank column that we set up. So how do we do that? Well, all we have to say is uh, we're going to be selecting, again, the salary from not employees this time, but instead our CTE, because that's going to have this rank column. Uh, let me just name this a little bit differently. Um, where rank equals N, right? So when I pass the three, it's going to say, you know, give me the salary where the rank equals three or two or whatever you pass as N. And that's how you make it dynamic. Um, so one thing to note here, what's going to happen in this example, right? If I just say, select salary from this where rank equals two, for example, what's gonna happen? It's gonna return two rows. It's gonna return because, you know, you have two rows where the salary is 400 because it's, um, you know, the second highest salary based on this rank function, basically. So given that that's the case, um, one way to fix that, and in fact, there's two benefits of doing this, is you're gonna use the max function here, right? So give me the max salary from this CTE where the rank is, you know, whatever N happens to be. And uh, the reason it's very beneficial, again, one, because it's gonna deduplicate record. Instead of having two rows of 400 and 400, you will now just have, uh, you know, one value for 400. The other thing, let's say, let's say I pass seven, right? There is no rank seven. So what's gonna happen is if I do select salary, where rank equals seven, um, it's just not gonna return anything. But in fact, if you look at the requirement here, we have to pass, we have to return null if that's the case. So one of the thing with the max function is since you're using an aggregation, when you take an aggregation of nothing or you know no rows, you still return null. So that's well within you know what is required. So that's gonna be the solution here. Let's try and run this and good to go. I'm gonna hit submit. 
looking good. Again, that's how you beat 94% of the competition. So be sure to like the video if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching.